Hi, hello everyone in the world of the eye of my camera. Um, stones, stones have been coming up a lot. So we have some stones coming forward in this reading for the monthly read for September. Already September 2023, because the time be lighting. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, happy last days of August and last nights of August to you. August is always an interesting time for me. Um, I forget about it almost every year about how it is. That being said, how it is is always expansive. So I don't know what it is about August and like my Jupiter situation, but it is been fine by me this retrograde season. At least it hasn't been like devastating i don't know hopefully it hasn't been devastating for any of you so none of those decks none of those it's all the decks okay it's just it's just crystals okay the earth is speaking so we have i have i'm i bought recently three new decks actually one, this might be one of them kind of pulling two but so i got first the dirt gems deck by it's a plant oracle deck and guidebook by Anne Louise Burdett and Chelsea Granger. And I really like these images. And this is like one of their black and white ones. That deck goes hard. And then I got this deck, mostly because the images are really nice. The crystals stone deck. The images are nice. The writing is a little, but the images are nice. And that's what is prioritized in that deck. And then this deck kind of read me for filth which was hilarious um the music oracles and it says 50 cards creative and life inspiration from great musicians it's very simple and straightforward and on this like you could just read it like from what's on the card here but it's informative so i'm glad i added some new decks to the collection so the crystal decks that will be stepping forward are our old friend the tarot of gemstones and crystals and our new friend, Crystals, the stone deck. Um, and then we'll see if Dirt Gems wants to step up. But maybe that'll just come in the individual pulls in the end. So, all right. What do we need to know about September? What do we need to know about September, the last month of summer, the first, over, over, the first month of fall? Um... I think that was straightforward. <laughs> yes, like Crystal Collab. Yeah, I like the name Dirt Gems too. Because they are. Um, okay, so the cards, those cards came forward very clearly. Those, they snapped. Um, and then some of these boxes are actually like really nicely designed, I gotta say. Like the quality of cards has gone up so much. And the diversity of cards. Ooh, maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Let's see if that's our key card. Is that our key card. Interesting. Interesting key card. And last but not least. Oh, let me just see if that card exists in this deck because again, the images are beautiful, but the write-up is a little silly. Let's like definitely written by some bros, but at least they're spiritually inclined bros. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> I don't see it so far, which means it's fine. I was simply curious if it was possible. Okay, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, our concern, opportunity, obstacle, advantage, diversion. You know the drill. If you don't know the drill, go back and look at previous videos so you can know the drill. Um, our concern card, what is objectively going on? Ooh, king of swords, not gold coming forward. First of all, first of all, okay. So this is already a very different energy from August because I don't remember the August cards, but I do remember the sentiment of the reading 
was that, you know, like creatively pursue and like become as much of yourself, the version of yourself that you most prefer to be in terms of embodying the things that they would do. And obviously that's always true and you should not, not do that. But for the concern to be the King of Swords, this is giving me energy like the the amount of realness that one has had with himself in the summer or in the in the in the swell the swelled seasons i don't even know why that just came to me but in the seasons that are like you know more bountiful right the more resourceful seasons it's like everybody can you know maybe maybe everybody finds it easier to sort of like avoid the things that lie underneath the dirt gems if you would um during seasons where it's like busy or people are out and about or like it's not facing you in the same way that in the colder seasons we have the opportunity to sort of like step back not only because uh depending on where you live less might be going on outside because of your weather or, you know, it, you might be living in a place where it's people visit seasonally and so it's just a quieter time or perhaps kids are going off to school or things like that. But like the point is more or less that we're getting into a time where we're having a bit more. Um, it's not so much isolation, I think, as time to ourselves, times within our minds, because swords is our intellectual suit and it is about our sort of sifting through the data and deciding what is useful and what is not to the identity that we are choosing from the present moment. So I'm curious as to what this King of Swords is in relationship to, because I always think of the King of Swords as like the apex of integrity, the arc defender of truth at their best, and like otherwise basically a master of delusion. Um, yes, time, times within our minds, which obviously we're always spending, but there's conscious times, there's subconscious times. Um, and there's unconscious times, right? Which is like our dreamscape. Um, so this King of Swords is coming in to ideally not be a master of delusion. Ugh, one can only hope, but to be a clarifier, a a purifier, if if it would. And um, because you know, gold, they're always like, gold doesn't tarnish, you know, gold is like 100 forever, whatever. Um so let's see what our opportunity obstacle card is because I have not turned it over yet. We have temperance, rose quartz, isn't it? That? I just, crystals are just so pretty. Um, okay. Um, well, one, I do think that it's kind of clear that we're going into a different season in terms of our health, um, in terms of our, um, and, and in terms of like the little the literal environment. So to me, the temperance is like quality over quantity, um, making sure that you are showing up where you need to be rather than just where you're invited or just where you think you want to be. Um, and always allowing the biocompassing nature of existence to affirm you through positive synchronicity allow you through neutral synchronicity or deny you through negative synchronicity right so it's like if something isn't for you to do there'll be multiple indications that that's the case even if that multiple indication is you keep asking yourself mm, do i really want to go to this um if existence keeps making it easier on you i'll give you a little example from my life i was coming home and a homie was asking me if I wanted to go out in a few hours. And I was like, I don't know, you know, I, I like, I'll figure it out. I have just been doing work. I'm coming home. And I came home. I had time to change, settle. It was like way hotter where I was before. It was cool when I came home. I had the ability to change, eat something, watch something with the family. The friend was delayed and then was also like, oh, I'll pick you up. So it was like everything was made easier as the night went on because I used the times I needed to use it. So by the time I got picked up, I was ready to go. I went out. I had a good time and I came home. You know, I could have easily have said, like, no, don't bother. But because they made it easy on me and it was something I was actually interested in doing, which was a book signing, um, I went and it was a, a fellow student that my friend went to school with to UCA, USC grad school with. And their book was called From Princess to Porn Star, A Real Cinderella Story. I have to say, 
that has something to it. <laughs> a real Cinderella story that that, this, that she was like from princess to porn star. It, it, the direction that I went was the actual was the actual Cinderella story. So I'm like, what does that mean? Um, and it was at a wonderful bookstore where I ended up being able to pitch, going to do readings because it's a very witchy ass bookstore. We're getting into that season. It's called Book Soup, and um, and so you know, it was like a, a kismet time. Everything aligned. It wasn't overwhelmingly like, and then you know, I the stars completely aligned, but it was like a good experience and a necessary experience. So when the opportunity presents itself and makes it easy on you, that makes sense, right? That's like alignment, yes, positivity, lubrication of the circumstances. But when there's something that you have been doing, let's say, that you're continuing to feel consistent or more resistance to, whether that be because you have your own negative beliefs that you still need to work through, or that be because outside of you, the things aren't aligned to actually support you in that aspect right now, then it's just time, you know, to spend to yourself, which also is the energy with temperance because it's rose quartz, right? I mean, I do think of rose quartz as a stone of tending to the self, obviously tending to the heart, but like being gentle and reflective and like, and and I mean, and medicinal in a way, that's not even really the language that I'm looking for. There's a word between tending. Ooh. Oh, um, did existence just make it even easier on me? Um, people on YouTube in the future who see this, you won't know why I said that. But just let me know. Let you let me let you know. Existence is divinely aligned. Um, so this also, it's not simply tending, it's like taking care of, I guess, is the kind of energy that I'm talking about with Rose Quartz. That that would come after the King of Swords. Oh, oh, by the way, let's backtrack to the King of Swords, because I've been wanting to say this for a while. So if you've been listening to my tarot talks for a while, you know I'm sort of developing these narratives around the court cards. I have narratives for um, the pages. I have narratives for the queens, and now I have narratives for the kings. And the narrative for the kings and the narrative for the ace, because I read aces high, right, um, are not, are interchangeable in a way, except the ace, they're interchangeable for the king, because what applies to the ace applies to the king. But when it is an ace, it goes further. So let me just say it like this. I like to start telling the story that the King of Swords is like Megan the Stallion. Okay. It's like their character is so impeccable that anyone who throws dirt on their name is shown their ass. And that they even under duress maintain their integrity. Right. Like given every opportunity to act up and act a fool in response to the way that people treat you, that you still choose to have good character because that's what was in the first place. Right. So that's the King of Swords, whereas the King of Wands is more like Beyonce. Right. Like everybody knows, everybody knows, everybody knows Beyonce is the best performer in the world at this time. So like. This is a way of saying, like, with the ace, with the at the king of the king of wands, Jesus, with the king of wands, it's like more of people heralding you. With the king of swords, it's like your reputation is sterling in a way that it doesn't necessarily even precede you. It's like it that stands, uh, ableist, that out like can, that shines out that 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 like shows out in the end I'm not really sure how to say this in a way that is like as poetic as I would like it to be but essentially that there is a resilience there's a resilience to the king of swords um and obviously there is um not only a resilience and temperance because it's like coming back from something right it's like finding balance again but there's also um, like temperance is something that is a, like a card about a lot of emotional intelligence, because if we're thinking about being temperate, we're thinking about someone who is like taking account of the temperatures in the room um, and who is also taking account of like where they need to be at in relation to those things. So I think that there's also some energy in temperance of like 
not my monkeys, not my problem. Like, if people are, like, going down their rabbit holes, that that's for them to do. And that temperance also means, like, releasing yourself from getting caught up in other people's stuff. If you are taking the time to do what you need to do, you know, that you can be available for those things that are coming from the people, places, and things that are very relevant to you, but that you do not have to be caught up in even like society's drama simply because society's caught up. You can very much be um, sowing what you're going to reap, tending to your garden, like developing as you want to be developing and not being so caught up in the in the narratives and in the sensationalist aspects of like the way the world works right now. Like for instance, in being in LA for the hurricane, there's so much sensationalism in the news and so much like wanting to maintain people's attention and to get ratings that like the way that they reported it was like blown totally out of proportion. Like even if they had just walked outside, any of these LA reporters could have been like, let me be, you know, <laughs> conservative in my estimates. But instead there are all these people in like Trader Joe's buying food. Like they had the shelter for five months. It rained for like 24 hours and it rained way harder in the winter where we are. Right. But the point is people in LA, LA news was reporting this and then I had people contacting me from other places being like are you okay and I'm like what are they seeing on the news because there is this sort of like alarmism not sort of there is this alarmism that takes place so I think temperance is also here being major arcana like our spiritual purpose and life purpose to not forget like yes earth is going through a spicy time you incarnated now for a reason because you like spices and flavored foods and like you just wanted to be here in the soup and so this is what the soup is right now especially because we're finishing up this chariot year and you know i think that the next few months are going to go by very quickly especially as the sun retreats earlier and um we're just in a position now where we're sort of on the doorstep of what is going to be obviously a very involved year on a societal level, not only because of elections, but because in tarot, it's a strength year. I was saying to some, a client this weekend at the open eye crystals when I was doing readings, like you have to have confidence to open a lion's mouth. Okay. And in strength, this motherfucker is like, <laughs> so we have to go into next year with a lot of confidence in who we are, what we're doing here, what our purpose is our existential purpose and like what we need to do, which is another form of temperance. What is my business? What do I need to do? Um, who are my people? Uh, those are the kinds of questions that I think need to be asked and answered right now. And this is also asking ourselves honest questions. Now, what about our character? So actually, if we're saying whether temperance actually is an opportunity or an obstacle, I think it's both for people, because obviously, if you're if you're not engaging in temperance, then you're overindulging in whatever that may be. That might be in the wrong direction from where you need to go. That might be in the wrong communities. That might be in the wrong work. That might be in the wrong relationship. That might be in the wrong place. Um, and by wrong, I just mean like no longer in alignment for you, not on some moralistic whatever, whatever. Um, OK, now card number three. What about our character? is helping or hindering the circumstances and we have uh, oh the two of wands selenite love to see it i have a big wand of selenite right here Boop. um so two of wands is like one of my new favorite cards. I'm just saying new favorite cards because there were years there, even for clients, where I wasn't really pulling that card that often. But as I look at this sort of story of the suits, I, I mean, wands is kind of a funny story because they start, it, everything starts off so well, right? Two of wands, they're like, I want to see the world. I want to, you know, go places. I want to live the life that I I dream of living, right? Um, that I see in my vision, but not in my reality. And then at the three of wands, 
they left the porch and now they're on the shore and like there's a boat coming in. We don't know if it's leaving or if it's coming, but we know that this person is like on the way. Okay. Then they're at the four of wands and they're like, yes, like celebration, like marriage of desires might be, you know, actual marriages sometimes, but mostly it's like, I have met, I have unified my curiosity with my experience and I'm satisfied. Um, and then at the five wands, it's like, eh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. This place, like these people, it's like different. And then you get to the six and then you get to the seven and then you get to eight, you get to nine, you get to 10. And by the time that you make it into the court cards, it's like, you have been through the ringer. Like you have, you have like gone, you have chosen every battle. <laughs> you have uh, confronted every person who has been in your face. There's a lot of expenditure in of energy in wands and granted it is fire and it does have to expend itself to exist, right? Fire is in a natural life and death process that as it consumes the thing that helps it live, it also helps itself not exist. And then there's the fact that with fire, it is a, an element that is uh, explicitly tied to relationship. So a fire consumes too much, it puts itself out. If it consumes too little, it puts itself out, depending on what it consumes. It um, like influences the quality of, of the experience of the burning and the length of the burning. And so certainly with fire, we do have to be intimately and like willingly, <laughs> intimately and willingly aware of what influences that people actually have on us. And or what influence we allow ourselves to have on ourselves around anyone, regardless of what kind of influence they have, you know, because any anyone can try and influence you. But if you're not susceptible to that influence, then it's irrelevant. So with this two of ones being the advent, like the what about our character is helping or hindering us? What helps about our character is like there's more to life than distraction. Right. There's more to life than us. Um, lying to ourselves and there's more to life than us limiting ourselves which can be also a negative aspect of temperance right like there's there's something to be said about answering the call and there's something to be said about being along for the for the adventure because I do have to say like Wands is an adventuring suit this is someone who is out there um, this is someone who is like and also like in almost constant motion um, throughout their their journey. I'm actually trying to think about it right now. And I'm like, I mean, I think the only card where Wands is sitting is like the six of, six of Wands. And that's like when they're coming home from a battle. <laughs> so it's like Wands people only rest when they like fucking have to. So there's this energy with the two of wands too to like introduce yourself, right? Like if I introduce myself to you, I was one and you were one and now we're two. So there's this sense of not being afraid to be new, to be an amateur, to be um, at the beginning of the journey. And um, currently reading myself as I continue to apply to things and get rejections, but also hear back and also find more things to apply to. And also am excited by the application, right? It's a nice to apply yourself. And I think that's something that Wands has really a lot to offer in the department of the application of the actual self, not just the theoretical self, not just the physical self, but the total self, the total self. Then our key card, should we choose to accept it, the skeleton key or the keystone is, and that's why I was like, 